On the 22nd of March 2013, I got to Exeter train station. I had an overflowing set of panniers and a bike I'd borrowed from my dad. I was meeting 20 other people I'd never met. We'd all decided to do the end-to-end -end bike ride with Break the Cycle. We were going to cycle the length of the country while visiting various communities, permaculture projects and farms. The ride was to raise money for Building Man, a new permanent festival site concept. I'd never cycled this far before and was also filming the journey. So first, I wanted to meet some of my fellow riders. Hi, my name is Nigel. I am Harriet, Harry, and I like cycling pretty much because it's easier than walking. I'm Carl and Kathleen, and I love cycling because I like being outside. Um, it's, a, it's an immersive thing to do, um, and it's like a good speed. I'm Chris, Chris Hardy, and I think probably the, the, way, the way you feel connected with the environment that you're moving through. Yeah, it's easy to stop and walk and, and pick flowers or garlic or talk to people. Yeah. 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 But now before we get started, some of you might be interested in finding out a little bit more about Break the Cycle. Break the Cycle is a group of people who design adventures to empower and inspire its challenges, to instill a sense of adventure in their everyday lives, to transform the mundane to the magical, and so playfully create a more beautiful world. That way. We arrived at Land's End on the bus. It was cold, damp, and I was with a group of strangers about to embark on something physically and mentally challenging, and I was starting to wonder why on earth I'd decided to do it. So I thought I'd ask some of the others why they were here. No, I came on the end-to-end -end after considering doing Land's End John O'Groats, opportunity to eat well, meet good people, and achieve a sort of one of my little bucket things, really, cycling this beautiful country. There was two things that really caught my attention. Firstly, visiting the different communities en route. Also the fact that there's a bus carrying our stuff just because I didn't want to carry all my stuff away. <laughs> oh, perfect adventure, like learning stuff, piecing England together in a really good way through like lots of interesting communities and um, meeting loads of interesting people living their lives in loads of great ways. So today um, we're going to a place called Land Matters. Uh, it is just north of Totnes. South. south. It's just south of Totnes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it looks like. Yeah. How was that? <sighs> I nearly stopped but I didn't. I feel quite proud of myself. Ah. What a day! What a fucking day! Fresh I love out. it, so we're going to begin. Condiments are such like luxury. <laughs> After a long day's cycle and a quick boat ride, we arrived at Land Matters, a permaculture community just outside Totnes. I'll just say a couple of things about land matters. The co-op owns the land and the people who live here are members of the co-op. We've got 42 acres here, roughly half pasture and half woodland. We're a low impact permaculture project, so permaculture is the ethos that binds us together. With this kind of change of lifestyle, you don't have to decrease your quality of life but you do have to reduce your consumption and the things that you want. And if we could all live mm -hmm. in a much simpler way, mm -hmm. well, I do believe in luxury as well, you know, I think luxury is great, but we could share it. This is the stuff the kids have made, it's like our museum, but it's to remind them when they go in and out that they're really good at making things. So if they see them on the table all the time, then they might be inspired to go and make some more. Hey, bus life is an important part of this journey. <laughs> yeah. I am. <laughs> The next day was a short ride to the next project, Embercoombe. 
I think the only structures that were here at the start when they got this land were these two hangars. It's been here for like uh, about like 14, 15 years, something like that. Um, let's walk. But Tim McCartney set the place up, like I said. He's, a, he's like a, <coughs> works as a big kind of management consultant, um, helping like big companies do their sustainability stuff. Yeah. They're all they're all courses on kind of bringing like a more spiritual, uh, sustainable kind of ethical dimension into your personal life and into your like business working life. That's like the idea. You know, it's really like for people. I was here on the weekend courses, and they would always have people from all over England, like from London, come and escape. And everybody always says how like how nice it was to be able to get <laughs> away, you know, and put some energy into a place like this. Yeah. It's just interesting to see the difference in the models, because mm. mm. I mean, I'm, we've, having been to a few places like that, I thought Landmatters was really, really well done. Yeah. Really, yeah. really well made. Yeah, it's a good structure to it. Yeah. yeah, really well thought through and quite well resourced for that yeah. kind of project. I, but this is a different <laughs> scale. <laughs> the first few projects of the trip, we had arrived in the dark and had to be off early in the morning. The projects were one of the main reasons I had come, so it was great to get a proper tour around both Land Matters and Embercoon, two extremely different models. The next day we were off to Bristol, where we had a building man fundraiser to pull together, for that evening. Crowds of people were coming to coexist, to eat a meal made from surplus food, dance to some great bands and find out more about what we were doing. We split into teams, with Julia, Rich and I going to cafes, shops and restaurants to ask if they had anything they were throwing away. A bit homemade, <laughs> a little bit last minute. <laughs> Like, True yeah. building man yeah, that's style. How we roll. <laughs> yeah. Woo what did you get? Chicken style roasted. Wow! That is amazing! We have cabbage and a pineapple. Yeah! Same almost the way the difference lay. I'm telling you, at the end of the day, it's the same one's getting paid. Same one's getting paid. Same old people getting paid. Well, I'm sick of all the people who lie. Telling me the freedom and democracy. Endless pot of lentils. At the end of the day, it's the same ones getting paid. Same ones getting paid. Whatever ingredients there are. Freedom of markets in which we've been parted. The power to control our lives. And I'm sick of all the people who steal money from the poor just to make a new deal. Thinking of the profit they're making, while well, the poor keep on scraping the money just to make their next meal. And I'm sick of all the people who say. The day after the party, it was time to get on the road. It felt really good to dance and have fun with everyone, but I wondered how the others were finding the intense group dynamic. What I like about the group dynamic is there's lots of different people from lots of different walks of life and it's quite nice because everyone's taking their time and getting to know each other but being really open and comfortable as well so it's all just kind of happening really naturally. Because it's quite intense and quite tiring it's been like a bit of an overload for some people who are like who, who will work really hard even when they're really really tired to like make dinner if everybody's absolutely exhausted you know sometimes things have come back to like Joe and Marcus particularly mm. to have to like support everyone I've hardly se seen any kind of little like little sex or little groups forming you know where people don't want to hang out with other people I haven't seen that hardly at all this is Julia with her legs out legs out legs. on day number seven woohoo yeah. woohoo amazing really amazing I've really enjoyed being in the group and I must admit I was a bit tentative about it at first. Um, I have found in the past when I've been in groups sometimes it felt a bit stifled but with this group I've even though it's been really intense in terms of like the experiences we've had together we've all gotten along so well and I think it, that's been really special and I think that's something that I really carry with me like 
it's, it's made me a better person as well actually because I observe other people doing kind things and it makes me want to do things like that as well. So I feel like we're almost like all just like the, the, the kind of the level of kindness is just increasing as the trip goes on. <laughs> We arrived at Bodmin Manor, the place Building Man was going to be held, really late in the evening. The bus had broken down so we didn't have any of our stuff or anything to cook with. Joe and Marcus did an epic chip run and we all curled up in the main room, sleeping in random places or chit-chatting until the bus came. I was amazed that no one moaned or even seemed slightly grumpy. Everything now just felt like part of the adventure. Bodnam Manor is um, a collective of people that have arrived um, almost by a, a series of happy accidents. So there's been a whole lot of people come here and literally drop everything mm. of their own normal life to be able to create something um, that's, that works in a, a you know, more intelligent capacity in relation to our connection with the land and our connection with each other. This place is quite raw. You know, this place is, is ready now to be experimented with. There's a, a huge amount of potential, but it's quite raw. I think that can be quite challenging, but as well as a really nice, it's quite analogous with the situation we find ourselves in on a more macro level. You know, we like, we don't have a clean slate. You know, we've been doing this for quite some time now and we've built a whole load of infrastructure. You know, we've got a whole load of resources. We've dug a phenomenal amount of things out of the ground. Uh, and, and now we need to transform the way we live transform the way we relate to each other. But using all those conceptual frameworks and using all these physical infrastructures that we already have, that already exist. Um, and I think everyone's arrived here with the same kind of um, core dream for the future, which is that we have so much of the bits and pieces that we need within ourselves as individuals and within the abundance which is available. Um, it's just a case of kind of putting the bits and pieces together with with a uh, with with a greater intelligence and understanding of of how we can how we can change things, um, and putting it into practice. We were now about halfway through the tour in Shropshire. We were starting to work together like a well-oiled machine, and sometimes I was struggling to see where I stopped and my bike began. Cycling was getting easier, and although spring was taking its sweet time to arrive, break the cycle life felt pretty normal and pretty great. One hell too many. Yeah. It's been so long, like stretching it, opening it, making sure my toes going to open. And then it's just been decked. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Tell me what it's like having 20 cyclists come to your home. Awesome. It's Awesome because they're all very funny. <laughs> and what's the best thing about living on a farm? Uh, you get to have pigs for your birthday. So it's like spring has sprung, finally, hopefully. We've had a few hard days before, um, especially camping out in the snow and stuff like that. Uh, but it seems we're getting a bit more used to now, making sure we have enough layers on and, uh, and knowing how to take care of ourselves a little bit more. And so it's becoming not so much about survival, but more about enjoying the trip as well and talking together and uh, making connections and conversations. Okay, well welcome everybody. Uh, I do recognise quite, quite a few people from 2011, but uh, I think there's some new faces as well. So for those of you who don't know me, my, my name's Phil. Hello, Phil. And uh, I, I, uh, I work here with my colleagues and uh, we run this site and have been doing so for 15 years, since 1997. And uh, this is Offshoot, Offshoot's permaculture project. Well, um, permaculture is just a combination of two words, permanent culture, so at heart it's about sustainability. <laughs> And our sort of take on it is that permaculture is 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 localised. You know, it's it is entirely down to it's practised in the way that it best benefits your community. So here in Burnley, we're um, Burnley's an old mill town. Its principal um, industry 
uh, was cotton. Uh, and the pits then supported that, you know, they, they provided the fuel for it. Um, so when that all, you know, died a death, uh, the town went on a bit of a spiral of decline and really hasn't recovered yet. Fifteen years ago, I, along with a group of other people, thought, well, you know, what could we possibly do to try and address some of these issues and bring back some harmony, bring back some hope and some sort of perspective on what can be done sustainably and how we might work with our environment so it isn't quite so destructive because the pits were extremely destructive. We work with all the schools in the borough and the region. We, we work with lots of schools during the course of any week. Today was a volunteer day with 25, 30 adults and 15 young people, their children coming along again, pitching in and that's how we take over, you know. And we, we generate about 65 to 70% of our own income through training courses and some of the stuff I've been talking about, food sales and other things. So that's our principal uh, income stream. Every year that ratio of income generated against funding required increases in, in, in favour and that's, you know, that's, we're actually constitutionally obliged to achieve that through the constitution that we wrote 15 years ago. This is uh, an 1840 mill, and I bought it against everybody's advice about 40 years ago. They all said, don't be so stupid because it's in such a terrible state, but I ignored them all because I just had fallen in love with the building and had a wonderful soul and age and sort of belonged to people who really lived a proper working life with water power. Hey! <laughs> so you can see I'm a bit of a collector of stuff over the years. It's mostly to do with um, tools that belong to sort of peasant culture of the past. I'd sometimes come in and play music on them. Got some lovely tones to them. Some of them aren't very good. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even, even that has a relevance, I think. It's just what people did in days gone by. I mean, that saw was that big. Wow. All the way along, shaped like I'm showing you. And the owners just sharpened it and sharpened it and sharpened it. Yeah. That just doesn't happen nowadays. That, 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 he wouldn't, that, was, that was just how you did it, really. What a responsible use of a finite resource. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> These are the uh, jars of stuff that I have accumulated for a future works. Do you want burst tires? We can do some of those. Yeah! <laughs> Who wants burst? There was lots to do every morning to get 20 people up, fed and ready to go and it did sometimes feel a bit like we were going in circles. Just rushing around like a bee. You look like you're rushing around like yeah. a bee. Sorry, Fortunately got lunch in here I think um, three days ago which now needs to go back into the earth and be replenished with some nice new lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing my bike. <laughs> Get it on camera quickly. Oh. Right, I'm over the bus day. Ooh, dapper waistcoat. Just because you're cycling doesn't mean you can't have style. Hey, Fafa. Oh, you again. <laughs> How have you found the communities along the way? Like, what's been interesting? What's been your experiences of them? What have you mm. taken away from them? Yeah. Um, I think what I've got from visiting all these different communities so far has been just the feeling that you can just make anything happen really. Like whatever it is you want to do, just go and do it, which is great. My two favourite are Embercombe, we're Embercombe and um, Anamkara, where was Anamkara, yeah. Anamkara where we stayed last night. Because I think that their the work, their focus of their work is actually on like growing humans and healing humans. For, for me, that kind of work, um, it, like to heal ourselves and each other, that's like what I think is really powerful. I, I felt like you could kind of feel it in, in the, at those places, like they're just really beautiful and really like well sorted and really nicely organised. I just and I love that. I feel like we've seen so many different people living. Um, in what would be considered unconventional ways that in a way it's becoming almost 
not so unusual. That day, we were off through the highlands. It was truly breathtaking. Yes, Tom, how are we finding it? Porridge is nearly ready. <laughs> so uh, it's not too bad a day today. It's like 65 miles maybe. Um, 65 to 80, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we have an example of your Scottish accent, please? Well, to, with my nose and snotty, today we are riding to Inversnicky. And, <laughs> and I have just put extra seeds on my couscous. I'm getting worried about having that embarrassing moment when I get a seed stuck in my teeth. <laughs> Here comes my Scottish friend, Joseph. Joseph, could you give us a bit of your Highland, uh, Highlandness? Highlandness. Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> give us a bit of Wales. Give, give us a bit of Wales. Wales. <laughs> I've got to go and find my trousers. <laughs> We're kill if you hadn't guessed, we're now in Scotland. Can you see the monster? And there was like the one with the beautiful lips. So. And so year on year we do what it's all self-build and it's a year on year it's just adding another little bit to the to the story really. But do you um, not need planning permission for these? No, no, in the Highlands here we've got to, uh, if, you're, if you're a croft uh, you basically can have three caravans without planning permission. I think the point I'm making is that you can put you can put an infrastructure of this together relatively cheaply, mm. you really don't have to spend huge amounts of money. <laughs> It's, it's a feature of the place, it's, uh, there's been volunteers that, since we started uh, and that's a real feature of the place because we, we can't afford um, um, you know, um, to, to pay labour. To. Was building in your life um, before you came to this no, site? No, not at all. No? Not at all. Not so the skills that you sort of taught, taught yourself? Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm not a good joiner. I mean, if you, if you watch a good joiner working, you think, wow, well, that, that's a craft. Yeah. And I am not a joiner, I'm, I, I'm, I, it's, but oh. I bash it all together and it all well, sort of stays up. <laughs> Unfortunately, guys, we're going to have to yeah. Yeah. Yes. kick on and make a move because we need to make sure everything's absolutely spick and span. After Anam Kara, we had a short ride to Chris Johnston's house, where not only did he let us shower, cook, and generally slightly take over, he also gave us a workshop on active hope. This is extreme kitchen industry <laughs> at its finest. Some mushrooms from the bin. <laughs> Where are the mushrooms from, Georgie? From the bin. <laughs> a mushroom and a wild garlic soup. Ooh. Uh, that we forged. What's in the oven, guys? The weirdest thing you've ever seen. What is it? Curry bake with rice. Curry bake? With rice cake uh, breadcrumbs. <laughs> Making rice pudding. Okay. 
spicy apple -y, dainty rice pudding. Ooh. Well, the day had come, the final leg of the tour. I'd come to almost dread it, the end of life on two wheels. The end goal, which at the beginning had felt like the biggest part of the trip, now felt kind of insignificant. That isn't to say it didn't feel damn good seeing the sea and knowing we had cycled the length of Britain. <laughs> Well that was it. Over a thousand mile cycle, 12 projects visited and 20 new friends. I can safely say, the break the cycle end to end is one of the best things I've ever done. So here we go.